everybody, so back in video 1827 we burbled on about gears and we made this stupid and ridiculous massive gear. Now if you, I'm still worried about gears and think they're complicated mathematics, don't worry about them, jump over that video, have a look and you'll see just how easy they are. Anyway, it is, put your money where your mouth is time, so I've printed six of these. These are uh, 24 teeth on the outside, 12 teeth on the inside, the module is two, so we've got um, more or less 48 by uh, 24 as the reference circles. They're still missing their bearings, and I'm going to use skater bearings, which are 7 by 22 by 8. And that refers to the depth of them, so it's 7 millimetres deep, 22 millimetres on the outside diameter, and 8 millimetres on the inside diameter. And you find bearings are often specified like that. I've got some special bearings I had kicking around, actually, and these are 3 by 12 by 8. And so they'll go rather nicely in that bit there, because that's obviously much smaller. So I've got a couple of bearings to put in all of those, but I've got six of them. I've also printed myself up a base plate with, again, a couple of skater bearings in there. And two holes right there, which are going to take the bearing axles for my gears. And those two holes, if you remember, that's 48.24, and those together we get uh, 60, 72, <laughs> half it, 36. So those two are 36 millimetres centre to centre apart. If you remember from um, 1827, in order to know how to place these so these gears mesh properly, it is half of the reference diameter. Again, if you're not getting that, have a look at 1827. But half the reference diameter, which is the reference radius, add them together and you get the distance apart. So they are exactly the right distance apart. And I just put them in a straight line so that we can make it easy for us. But they're the right distance apart, as are they. That's the input shaft, that's the output shaft. And what you do then is drive a couple of steels in there. These are 8mm steel bars. And then we can slot our um, gears straight onto them. Okay, so I've got my bearings on. Now my input is going to be here, and it's going to be that one when I put a drive shaft on it. But it's going to be that one. This one, remember, is twice the size of the little one, so we've got a two to one ratio. If I just drop that on there, there we go. If I turn this cog, this one will turn twice the speed. If I drop that one on there, now I turn that cog, this one's turning four times the speed, because it's going two, four. Now, that's going eight times the speed because it multiplies. So we've got two, four, eight. The next one will be 16 times the speed. There we go. The next one will be 32 times the speed. And the last one will be 64 times the speed. So that, that is going 64 times that. Now, obviously, I'm going to put that on a drive cog out, which will be on that side, and the drive cog is twice the size of that. So that, sorry, this is twice the size of that. So that will turn at 120, 128 times the speed of the input here. So if I turn that at 10 times, that's going to turn over a thousand times. But to do that, I obviously have to bolt everything together now. Okay, that's it together, and it's awesome. Watch this. Look at the crazy speed that turns. Now, there's a couple of things I want to go through before I put this top plate on. Um, I've done this in a two-to-one gear ratio for no reason, just because I, I like that idea. But, of course, you could do it three-to-one, four-to-one, six-to-one, seven-nine, eight, five, six, three, two, one-to-one. You can do whatever gear ratio as you like, as long as you remember that thing we were talking about, the module and the wheel size. That is how you govern what these gear ratios are, because remember, it's the ratio of the reference circles. Now, that is the drive gear for me, and that is the driven gear, because I'm strong but slow, so I plan on turning this and getting a very high speed out of it so I can run a generator. That's what I'm doing with this. But gearboxes, they work either way. Now, if I make that my drive gear and that my driven gear, then I can turn that fast, 
and that will go very slowly, but it will go with a huge amount of power, a huge amount of torque and force will be produced there, so I could use it for something like a winch, say, something like that. So they go either way around. The gear ratios are up to you, they're what you choose, but we do them in a real world. So on a practical matter, when I decide where to put the holes for these, then strictly it's the radius of the two reference circles. If you don't know what I'm going on about, you need to watch the previous video, and I'll link in that previous video. But I added a quarter of a millimetre to each of those, so that we've got a tiny little bit of slop, because of course we're working in a real world of 3D printing these out of plastic, a little bit of slop doesn't hurt in the least to get the whole thing to turn. So I added on a quarter of a millimetre to the uh, total of the two reference circles. So remember, this is 50, the small one's 25, so that would be, um, says he, 50, 25, 12 and a half, and 25, 37 and a half. So they should be 37 and a half millimetres apart. They are, in fact, 37.75 millimetres apart. And I just added that in to give it a little bit of slop. Now, on another practical matter, when we print these gears, if you print them that way around, then the filament grain will go that way. And of course, if those teeth hit something, they'll shear off. So when you actually print a gear, you print it that way. So the grain is that way, meaning that these teeth, which have been printed there, are incredibly strong. So pay attention to the grain when you actually print these things. When we printed these, we printed them with a straightforward circular hole with space for the bearings, because each one of these units is free to spin by itself, which is why it adds up. But this one, and this one indeed, are um, going to take a lot of force. So if you look there, I've got a bit of 8mm bar, and I filed a flat edge on it, and that acts as a key, because drilling a hole and putting a bit of super glue won't last for something that's going to get the kind of turning force that we're looking at. And all that means is, with your gears, when you print them, you print them with a straight edge. It's really easy, you just put a block on it, a, a cube, and then you uh, merge the objects and you get that. So I made the gear, drilled an 8mm hole through it in uh, Tinkercad, put a block on, then merged all of the objects and I got that needing a keyway and then what I did was take a bit of 8mm bar and flatten one edge. Now I've got a key and that can cope with the stresses that this is going to be under. Now I can put my second piece on and my gearbox will be ready to rock and roll. Okay, there it is, there's my gearbox. I've put a handle on it, that's my input shaft, that's my output shaft. Like I said, I'm going to use this for a hand crank but it could equally be done for lots of other things. Anyway, let's have a look and see how it turns. <laughs> okay, that's, that is crazy. There is some mighty speed out of here, and of course I'm only putting uh, very little in there. I actually think that handle's a bit short, so I'm going to remake that handle so it's a bit easier for me to turn, but we're getting 128 to 1. I hope you enjoyed the video, hope it helped, thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe. Oh, and click the bell notifications.